So another Take 2 interactive conference call has gone by. They do these about a few times a year just to let their investors know what they have planned and stuff like that. And the CEO of Take 2 Interactive, which is the parent company of Rockstar Games, so obviously they know exactly what Rockstar has planned and are doing. And Strauss Zelnick, the CEO of Take 2 Interactive, gets asked certain questions and he just likes to do a Q&A really when they do these conference calls. For very direct questions like when is GTA 6 released? he would probably give kind of like a passive answer like well we've announced that active development for the next GTA game is underway and Rockstar Games will announce more as soon as they can so kind of like an indirect passive answer like that he's not exactly gonna tell you when they're gonna release it that's how he answered that question on a CNBC interview on live TV so it's safe to say he's probably gonna say the same thing in a conference call but one of the things he mentioned in the conference call kind of directly indirectly answers our question of when GTA 6 is going to be releasing and to give you a short answer it's going to be between April 2024 to March 2025. Why and how do we know that you ask? Well CEO Strauss Zelnick actually showcased their projections for fiscal year 2025 and the meaning of fiscal year 2025 for Take-Two Interactive is between April 2024 and March 2025. That is the window of fiscal year 2025 for that company and he said they're projecting to make a ridiculously high eight billion dollars in revenue that year now that's a huge jump from their normal i would say about four billion dollars in revenue a year and we can kind of connect the dots and figure out that nothing except a giant release like a gta 6 title can get them that astronomical jump from only four billion dollars in revenue to eight billion dollars that is just such a big boost from their usual earnings that it's safe to say that's when gta 6 is supposed to release because they're gonna make a lot more money once that game is out we can definitely say that for sure and so he did mention this giant revenue boost in one of his past conference calls and he did get asked about it this conference call as well so let's listen into this last quarter we talked about obviously uh, uh, achieving north of eight billion in bookings next year and north of one billion in operating cash flow i'm just kind of curious if those are still the right bogeys for next year so the answer to question one is yes and it's good that he got asked again about the crazy anticipation and boost that he mentioned for fiscal year 2025 because it basically confirms that they're still on track to release the game in that window and there's no delays so far that are going to get it beyond March 2025. Hopefully there isn't going to be any major delays but as of right now it's still going to be released in that window which is awesome. It kind of makes you wonder because a good chunk of that fiscal year 2025 window is actually most of 2025. And with a game possibly releasing as soon as next year in 2024, who knows, I think a realistic time would be the end of 2024. If not the end of 2024, it would get dragged into 2025. But if a game's releasing as soon as next year, an announcement has to be extremely close. And we've talked previously about how an announcement has to come out in like September or October, maybe November or December. So definitely look out for that time frame, which is crazy. That is super, super close. With Within the coming months, it's pretty legitimate to expect a GTA 6 reveal or some sort of trailer, just anything really. Usually when Rockstar reveals a big game like this, they kind of put out a teaser and then shortly after that they do a big reveal trailer which is gonna be insanely massive. At least that's what Rockstar did with RDR2 which is the most recent big title they got out. Let's go back in time real quick to February of 2022. Can we just point out it's been a good year and a half since the first acknowledgement of the next GTA game by Rockstar Games. In their official community update newswire, they said what's next and they basically said that active development for the next GTA game is well underway and we're excited to sharing more as soon as we can. How soon is as soon as we're ready? Because it's been a good year and a half since February 2022 so we're definitely waiting for something that's even more of a reason to be hungry for this reveal trailer that's coming. Also, does anyone remember the 17 year old kid from the U UK who actually leaked all the GTA 6 footage and then got arrested because the FBI and a bunch of other agencies tracked him down. Well, it's reported that he actually managed to get away from it after being arrested because he is unfit 
to stand for trial. How in the world did this kid manage to get away with a massive crime like this? I don't know what type of magic he did, but I feel like he called Lester in real life to get the cops off of him. I don't know what the frick. I couldn't even tell you exactly what unfit to stand for trial means and why that is. There's no way he actually got away with a serious, serious crime. I mean, he broke so many rules. I mean, depending on how you look at it, you might give him a hand for getting away with such a big crime and not going to jail for many, many years. Or you might say, shame on the judge or whoever it was that actually let him get away with it. For whatever reason, I guess he's not fit enough to stand for trial. This is one of the most bizarre stories. This is just beyond me, honestly. We don't know the full details, but based off what we know, this is crazy. And so the first time I heard this, I was bamboozled. I really did not believe it. So I dived a little bit more into this. And it looks like a very legit psychiatrist has given an opinion that he's just, he has issues and he needs to go to like behavioral places or something like that. And besides that, he is still bound to get a lot of charges against him. So safe to say, make better choices, kids, because this is not it. Let's get back to the conference call and talk about a few other interesting things. Strazelnik summarized the performance of the last three months of GTA 5 and GTA Online. There's been 5 million copies sold of GTA GTA 5 and GTA Online over the last three months. That's not very long. He said it exceeded their expectation and it just shows that it's crazy how many people are still interested and still buy GTA 5 and GTA Online despite it being nearly a 10 year old game. That is a very old game for that many people to buy 5 million copies in three months. Take Two and Rockstar are pretty happy with that performance for sure. Now another topic is GTA Plus. Whether you love it or hate it, I know there's kind of a stigma going around of disliking GTA Plus, but Strauss Zelnick said that GTA Plus is a huge success, which means they're probably making a lot of money off of GTA Plus. And I mean, a lot of people are buying GTA Plus, even though a lot of other people are strongly against the whole idea of paying extra money within the game for extra benefits and bonuses. And because of this big success that GTA Plus is having ever since it came out, it's safe to say we're gonna have some sort of GTA Plus type of thing inside of GTA. GTA 6. Whether you like it or not, we're very likely to have an in-game subscription service like GTA Plus. Whether it's going to be called GTA Plus or something else, that's another topic. But you can definitely expect something like GTA Plus and I can tell a lot of people are going to buy it, especially with a new GTA 6 title. Diving into the game itself, the story mode characters, which are Jason and Lucia that we know of so far, are going to be able to have real life jobs. So the only way to make money wouldn't just be doing crime missions and heists and all that, you're actually going to be able to make money legitimately through a real life job like being a cop or a firefighter or a paramedic. That's something that people already do in roleplay. So it looks like you're going to be able to do that type of roleplay with your actual story mode characters. I wonder if we're going to have that in GTA Online. I feel like if we can do that in GTA Online, that's going to change the whole dynamic of the game. We'll see. In that case, I hope to be a pilot because whether it's story mode or online, it's just the whole airport system that GTA GTA 6 could have. I really hope that they could take advantage of the crazy potential because we've never had an enterable airport in a GTA game before and it would actually be so freaking cool to have a fully operable airport just in the game with working planes and takeoff and landings just constantly happening and stuff like that. If it will be implemented into GTA 6 online, what theoretical real life job would you want your character to have? I'm curious to hear it down below in those comments. Now another cool feature GTA 6 is gonna have that no one really uses in GTA 5 much. The in-game TVs are gonna get to a whole new level. There's gonna be different shows, different channels, different events happening on TV that you could just sit on your couch and watch. Surprisingly enough, the shows that they have on TVs and properties in GTA 5 are actually decently detailed. If you actually sit and watch them, they're kind of crazy and funny. Same with the small variety of movies you have when you go to the movie theater in game but I mean no one really goes to the movies in GTA 5. I feel like when the next GTA does come out it'll actually be worth it to just sit down and take a look at what these TVs and movies have to offer because there's gonna be a much bigger variety than GTA 5. Imagine just watching like an AI Rockstar Games created basketball game that's scripted from the start and you can pick a favorite imaginary team and just hope they win when you're watching the game inside of a video game. It's one of those features that it's 
really cool to have but after people sit down and check it out maybe once or twice after that they're probably never gonna touch it ever again but still i can already picture a parody of netflix and paramount plus and all that just being implemented into the game so we have a full-on streaming service inside of a video game and then the final detail we're gonna get into is the npcs inside of gta 6 it's no secret that ai is getting like crazy good these days and that's definitely gonna have an effect on npcs in gta 6 because in gta 5 they don't do much besides either want to fight you or get scared and run away or something like that they just have a specific purpose and they're not very interactive at all not cops not people on the street nobody and so we got to remember this game came out all the way back in 2013 and for a game that's going to come out in about 2024 or 2025 the ai level is going to be way higher i've even seen rumors of you being able to have a full-on conversation with npcs so let's say you're just talking on the mic in game you can just say hi and ask them what their name is and they're actually going to be like really human and really interactive and it would be extremely exciting if we can have very intelligent npcs that we can have interactive conversation with even though they're just npcs within a video game i mean rockstar did say they're gonna reach a new standard with this game which is kind of obvious and when it comes to npcs that would set a whole new level for gaming in general of course whenever there's new juicy and worthy things to talk about with gta 6 i'll make sure to keep you guys covered now click the video on screen now for everything that we know of so far with gta 6 i hope you all enjoy that video and peace